in uh, various parts. So it varies a lot from where you are on the Lower Mainland. Other news now. Two men have been killed in an early morning plane crash on Salt Lake. First of all, yeah, we like to... Um Really warm temperatures across the prairies for the weekend, including the Grey Cup on Sunday, a record high for Winnipeg for the day. Northwestern Ontario, there were records set on Sunday, and we had a record on Monday in Windsor, over 16 degrees. And again, that was all in advance of this cold front, and now that cold front is bringing very warm temperatures into Atlantic Canada as you get that strong southerly flow just in advance of that. And we've got a big low as well that we're dealing with just off the B.C. coast. It's actually uh, just about over West Vancouver Island. East Vancouver Island, though, can expect the most rain. In fact, there is a heavy rainfall warning in effect for East Vancouver Island, in particular the northern sections of East Vancouver Island. It's been raining steadily in Comox all the way through Monday evening. Pretty heavy rain at times. Final totals expected from 40 to 70 uh, millimeters of rain, and it is going to be easing through the overnight hours as the low drifts off to the northeast. And as it does, the winds are really going to be picking up over the central coast and also the north coast. And then I was kind of blocking it there, but there's another low that you could see on that Pacific shot that's ready to move in for Tuesday. So as soon as this one gets out of the way, it's going to be replaced by another one, and the winds are going to pick up again, and then you're going to get heavy rainfall also with it. But right now, let's deal with this one. So the Sunshine Coast, Lower Fraser Valley, Howe Sound, and most of Vancouver Island are looking at uh, winds anywhere from 70 to 100 kilometers an hour, easing through the night, and then the Central Coast by Tuesday morning, and then the North Coast and the Queen Charlotte's similar strengths. Also, 70 to 100 gusts up to 100 kilometers an hour expected starting Tuesday morning, continuing all the way through to Wednesday afternoon for the Lethbridge, Crow's Nest uh, areas, including Pincher Creek. So get ready. But they are Chinook winds, very mild temperatures. It's also going to be windy across the rest of southern Alberta and much of southern Saskatchewan, but not quite into wind warning criteria. And we have uh, somewhat cooler temperatures in store for northern Ontario, and it's also due to that low with the cold front attached to it. That's where the center of the low is, so you're getting this northerly flow. So that's where the cooler temperatures are, but it's not cooling down very much in southern Ontario, southern Quebec, because you're still getting a westerly flow, and it's still Pacific air. Uh, in general, so it's not really cooling down a whole lot, but it will be cooler than a very mild Monday. Very strong winds in the Montreal area. We've seen gusts over 50 kilometers an hour in Ottawa. Beyond that now in the Montreal area, over 60 uh, kilometers an hour. Montreal, the Gatineau area, all the way up uh, along the shores of the St. Lawrence to Quebec City. Like all the other wind warnings, 70 with gusts possibly up to 100 kilometers an hour. They are going to be diminishing though over the next few hours. And then mild temperatures in, in advance of that cold front uh, through Atlantic Canada. As you know about, Michelle, I know you were in uh, the Maritimes this weekend. Was it mild? Yes, actually, it was beautiful on Monday. Of course, uh, just when I leave, that's when the nice weather hits. Anyway, time now to take a look at the continental portion of your forecast and see what's happening south of the border. If you're traveling to the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Washington, for example, uh, bring a raincoat because it's going to be windy and rainy. That area is being affected by the same low that's affecting southern B.C. Let's join Randy now for a look at the radar. Yeah, they're talking about rivers and streams in southern Oregon being uh, just ready to spill their banks. So completely saturated through the Pacific Northwest. And you know there's more heavy rain in the forecast for them coming up on Wednesday. And I'll show you why coming up. But first of all, still showers extending all the way down to about uh, San Francisco. And now in advance of these fronts, these cold fronts that are coming in off of the Pacific, they're really enjoying very mild temperatures to the south. Los Angeles, very mild in the upper 20s. Uh, Denver is also experiencing near record temperatures. Phoenix, Las Vegas, very mild. It's going to be very mild still for Detroit and Chicago on the other side of the jet stream. But southern Ontario, southern Quebec, as I mentioned, your temperature is taking a drop on Tuesday. But it's still going to be above seasonal at the very worst seasonal norms. And uh, the Maritimes will be cooling down. Although uh, daytime highs are about equal to your overnight lows, so very mild right through into the morning hours. And showers for Newfoundland and windy for St. John's and rainy and windy for southern B.C. This next low moves in. The first low is going to provide some rain to Regina and then across into western Manitoba where it will even start off as a bit of snow. Now that's what I was talking about. There's the heavy rain moving into the Pacific Northwest as this cold front sinks down. It's going to get cold by the end of the week in southern B.C. because we have a 
lot of troughing. You'll see the jet stream starting to sink down. And uh, just some uh, light precipitation moving across the Great Lakes. And then on uh, Thursday, uh, southern New Brunswick will start to see some rain late in the day, but the rest of Atlantic Canada, a nice day for you. Still some showers in B.C., but look at the flurries starting to show up. And then on Friday, that's what I was talking about. So some cold air begins to come down from the Yukon. It's going to be much cooler. And here's a look at your Tuesday temperatures.
someone special is waiting for you at Sears Portrait Studio. It's Rudolph from the new movie Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and you'll find him at Sears. Come in now and get all these portraits for only $5.95. Have them taken with the most famous reindeer of all on Sears' new Rudolph background, and take home this new collectible Rudolph portrait ornament free. Get holiday portraits of your special someone with our special someone for only $5.95. Only for a limited time at Sears. Hurry in. Environmental reporting on the Weather Network includes air quality readings. We're available. The data used in this report is provided by the provincial or municipal environmental department in your region. It's the oldest town in North America, but that isn't St. John's only claim to fame. It's the most eastern point on the continent. Dotted with quaint fishing villages and surrounded by magnificent rocky cliffs, St. John's is unquestionably diverse, especially where weather is concerned. Of all major centers in the country, the Newfoundland capital is the most foggy, cloudy, wet, windy, and snowy. Some say it's possible to experience all four seasons in one day. Imagine a world where car maintenance actually saved you money. Where all cars got better mileage and still respected the environment. And when it came time to sell, everyone would get top dollar. Welcome to the world of Autolink, where you get all this and more. Autolink is a comprehensive maintenance plan and savings program designed to help you get the most out of your car. For a limited time, receive your Autolink membership free with a Winds Extend cooling system service at these participating locations. Hello, I'm Elaine Yim with your Weekend Report Weather News. Wintry weather settled into parts of the prairies today. The Paul, Manitoba saw freezing rain earlier. The snow continues to fall in northern parts of the province with accumulations expected to reach 10 centimeters later tonight. Meanwhile, the freezing rain warning has been lifted for all of Saskatchewan and Manitoba. But the warning remains in effect for northern Ontario and into northwestern and central Quebec for tonight. It wasn't much of a record-breaking day for most of southern Ontario, despite predictions of warm temperatures. Cloudy skies and thick fog patches rolled in overnight as a warm, moist air mass surged northward across the region. Temperatures were predicted to rise, but the clouds have kept the sun from warming things up. However, Sarnia did reach 15.2 degrees Celsius, five degrees above its old record set back in 1975. Rain, snow and cold temperatures have been hitting California. Colder temperatures than normal were experienced in Los Angeles on Saturday, along with rain while the mountains received a heavy snowfall. It's one of California's first winter storms this season, and it's blamed for dozens of highway accidents. Two people died in separate wrecks in and around Los Angeles. In Central America, weather problems continue in Honduras. Four days of heavy rains are causing fears of mudslides. Floods and heavy rains are forcing the evacuation of thousands of people from the north. The country is still trying to recover from the devastation of Hurricane Mitch, which struck a few weeks ago. More than 6,000 people were killed by the hurricane, and another 8,000 people were left homeless. And in Bangladesh, floods have destroyed over 2 million tons of rice in the country. This means food production in the country will be down by about 75%. Earlier this year, the country was hit by some of the worst flooding in its history. It left three-quarters of the country submerged for more than two months. A tsunami warning issued by the U.S. Geological Survey for the islands of Indonesia has been lifted. A strong earthquake on or near of the island of Taliabu, about 370 kilometers south of Manadu, Sulawesi, had sparked the warning throughout the western Pacific. The earthquake had a magnitude of 7.6 and large quakes of this nature have been known to spark tsunamis or tidal waves. As Tropical Storm Nicole heads back out to sea in the Atlantic, the 1998 hurricane season is winding down. This season was one of the deadliest in more than 200 years. Storms left a staggering trail of death and destruction across Central America and the Caribbean. The season, which started June 1st, ends on Monday. 
As winter spreads across North America, many people like to feed the birds to help them through the colder season. But there are important things to consider before you start this hobby. Shelley Steves has been finding out a little bit more about feeding our feathered friends. Found in many backyards from October to May, bird feeders come in various shapes and sizes, from simple corn and nuts on a rock to elaborate buffet-style perches. Bird feeding, David Christie says, can be entertaining and educational. The major benefits are the enjoyment it provides bird watchers and the reliable food source it provides the birds themselves. They can get by uh, generally without the feeding, except when there's uh, an exceptional period of bad weather. You know, then. Um, you know, we have two or three or four times during the winter, perhaps, when there are very bad storms or when it may be very difficult uh, for birds to find food. The use of bird feeders will help them get through the winter crisis, much as it did during the ice storm of 1998. That covered the ice, encased a lot of the food that the birds were, uh, you know, would have to uh, normally would be feeding on. So bird feeders, where people were maintaining them, uh, provided a, a big hand for them. Christy says the birds know when harsh winter weather is on its way. He says six to twelve hours before a severe storm they start feeding ferociously at his feeders preparing to ride out the harsh weather. But Christy admits there are some negative aspects to bird feeding. Oh, yeah. They get the positive thing of having a, a, a more assured s supply of food and getting through those bad times but they're also uh, coming to the same spot all the time where they're more of a problem, uh, more of a uh, target really for uh, hawks. Hawks are the main things that, the wild things that come around. But in residential areas, cats are probably the, the biggest problem. Christy warns if you decide to take on this hobby, it's very important to remain consistent. Once the birds are accustomed to feeding at your home, you must keep it up all winter to help them survive. So if you want to take a tropical vacation this winter, Christy says to be sure to get a neighbor to look after refilling your feeders. For the Weather Network, I'm Shelley Steves in Marys Point, New Brunswick. That's a look at our news for this half hour. We'll keep you up to date with the freezing rain warnings, which are in effect for Quebec as well as northwestern Ontario. Your local forecast is next on Canada's Weather Network. <laughs>
Travel Week Bulletins, brought to you by Visit Florida. For your free Florida vacation guides, call 1-888-FLA-INFO. If you're itching to practice your golf swing or want to see your favorite team in action, Florida is a haven for sports enthusiasts. Serious players can enjoy tropical resorts that cater to golf, tennis, or deep sea fishing. Avid spectators can attend professional training camps, tournaments, and races. For those preferring something more sedate, you can go shelling on Sanibel Island. If traveling with less athletic companions, look for amenities such as shopping and museums to be close by. When booking a resort, remember to pre-reserve courts and tee-off times, obtain the right fishing licenses, and see if climate conditions are favorable. If you're going during the busy winter season, booking facilities for early morning or late afternoon may save you money. Florida's winter sunshine average approaches 80%, making outdoor activities ideal. Playing sports in Florida's sunny breezes will invigorate your spirit, delivering a full fitness holiday experience. The Travel Week Bulletins have been brought to you by Visit Florida. Introducing a must-read book about Florida that will simply take you away. In its pages, you'll find adventure, romance, wonder, and much more. Read by millions, it's a book that has created enjoyment and lasting memories. And best of all, it's absolutely free. The Florida Vacation Guide. To get your copy, call toll-free today. And after you've read about it, go live it. This is your weekend report traveler's forecast if you're heading out today. We do have dangerous road conditions to warn you about. In eastern Quebec and central regions as well as northwestern Ontario, we have freezing rain. But south of the area, extremely warm. But we have fog, so that means visibility is extremely poor in southern Ontario. Now here are the freezing rain warnings that are in effect. It includes Shibugamu, Satil, and the Parc de la Gaspésie, Murdochville, which is towards the Gaspé Peninsula. And then towards northwestern Ontario, it includes southern Pickle Lake, southern Sandy Lake, and western Attawapiskat. And then also, we've got a snowfall warning in effect for Whistler. We're expecting 15 centimeters of snow by tomorrow morning. Seven years ago, I had a dream, and with the help of AGF Mutual Funds, I'm living it. That dream was to be an actor in retirement commercials. My friends over there, actors. My caddy, he's actually a Broadway dancer. You see, AGF Funds helped me get to the life I'm living right now, and that's... Yeah! Just par for the course. Reach your dream. AGF. What are you doing after work? Let's take a look at your marine forecast. While in some areas it's still warm enough to head out for a leisurely ride, but many areas we're looking at snow and freezing rain. Starting with western Canada, we do have a small craft warning around the Queen Charlotte's. Winds predominantly from the south and southwest up to 30 knots. Cloudy skies, however, with a low pressure system. The wind warning has been lifted 
on the Sunshine Coast, north and east coast of Vancouver Island, but we still have strong winds on the water. Gale force winds, in fact, as well as a small craft warning, winds up to 35 knots. For the Manitoba Lakes, still the skies are cloudy. This is a low pressure system, a cold front actually moving over to northwestern Ontario, but the winds are calm. As you'll see, because the cold front's ahead of the province, we have winds coming from the northwest from 10 to 15 knots. In the Great Lakes region, cloudy, scattered showers, but clearer towards Windsor and Sarnia. We do have a small craft warning for Lake Erie, winds up to 20 knots, a southerly flow for Lake Michigan as well, 20 knots. Lake Champlain and Memphrey Magog, calm winds at 10 knots up the St. Lawrence Seaway, really nothing much to talk about. Easterly, 10 to 15 knots. Starts to get busier around the maritime provinces. Gale force winds up to the Cabot Strait, winds up to 40 knots. And then around Newfoundland, as a low pressure system moves off into the Atlantic, we have a small craft warning. Winds coming in from the northwest at 25 knots. Cruise Control is brought to you by Autolink, your key to saving money and the environment, now and down the road. You're looking a bit worried, Murray. Actually, Phil, I'm thinking about a no-start day and a cold winter day, and gee, it happened last year, and can I do anything to make it not happen this year? Yeah, your battery is usually a big problem. If that one's more than four years old, mm. it may not have enough voltage to turn the starter motor and fire the plugs at the same time. In which case, with a fuel-injected engine, you'll instantly flood, need a garage to help you get started again. So your battery needs a load test. Can I test it? Oh no, you need one of these machines to do that. Okay. But the advantage is that while you're having the load test done, they can check your alternator for performance. By the way, when you get to the garage, if they tell you you've got less than nine volts of output, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to replace that battery. And if you do replace it, make sure you do it environmentally friendly. Too much lead in the environment already. Mud holes. Dirt roads. Most people wouldn't think of driving through stuff like that. But then that's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. It automatically transfers power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip, which means it does the thinking for you. Sorry, mate. Guess I wasn't thinking. You're watching the Weather Network. Covering weather and environmental issues, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Thank you for watching the Weekend Report on the Nation's Weather Network. My name is Elaine Yim. While it's still not as warm as we want it to be in Toronto, we have record-breaking temperatures across Ontario, from Wawa and Geraldton down to Windsor. I'll have your national 5-day forecast coming up in 4 minutes with all the weather details you're looking for. Thank you.